Good morning, I'm Harley Schlanger from the LaRouche Organization with your daily video update for May 21st, 2024. Last week in my discussion with Helga Zepp LaRouche, she emphasized the fact that, that we're in a pre-war situation, that the danger of a headfirst plunge into world war is increasing. And it's due to the fact that the continued control over U.S. policy by British geopolitics is the driving force toward war. Now, I'm going to review today the conditions that are both part of the war danger, but also I want to start with the fact that we're in a world situation where it's not that difficult to see a shift out of that out of the war danger into a new strategic architecture and an economic development architecture. And the, the most important point here is that it's the American people that will make the difference. The only really strong international force keeping us on this war path is the government of the United States, which is under the control of a military industrial financial complex tied to the city of London using classic British geopolitical imperial methods. And we, the American people, have to make a break from that. First in our own thinking to understand who's doing it and to see what the alternative is. Now here are the indications that we have a potential that's ripe for peace. The Russia-China alliance with the putin G meeting reaffirming their commitment to collaboration. Uh, this can't be stopped by the West. They can blabber about it all they want, but it's unstoppable. Secondly, the emergence of the BRICS and the Global South. Uh, the discussion of the use of national currencies to break away from the weaponization of the dollar. Uh, the commitment to economic development of sovereign nations. This is another case of the horse getting out of the barn before the barn door could be closed. Then you have the situation in Ukraine where it's clear that Ukraine can't win. Even former Russian oligarch Khodorkovsky is now saying the war is all but over. Uh, then you have Israel continuing a war in Gaza, but isolated. And we now know that, that the vast majority of nations in the world support a two-state solution. The impediment here again, the United States support for the Zionist policy of Israel of greater Israel and an ethnically cleansed Palestine. Then we also have the International Criminal Court. This was somewhat surprising, issuing arrest warrants for Bibi Netanyahu and Defense Minister Gallant, uh, as well as three Hamas officials, charging them with war crimes. The ICC usually only targets African countries for war crimes. Uh, it, it, we'll see what happens, but warrants are being issued for Netanyahu and Gallant. Very, very interesting development. Now, at the same time, we have some very ominous developments, starting with the death of the Iranian president, Raisi, and his foreign minister, Amir Ab Abdullah, Abdullah Haim. Now, there's an investigation underway into this. The Iranians are not uh, blaming anyone. What's interesting is that they knew they were going into a very rough area, bad weather, with extremely old helicopters. Uh, this is partly the result of sanctions, but there's still something to investigate there. Uh, the assassination attempt of a Slovakian Prime Minister Fico is another part of the uh, picture. The initial uh, comment from the Slovakian government was they thought it was a lone wolf assassin. That's been taken back and there's an investigation underway there. Uh, Fitzo is a, a full opponent of NATO involvement in Ukraine and has been calling for the Slovakian government to stop any aid to Ukraine and has been siding with Orban against the EU and NATO. So he was clearly targeted, and he was on the Ukrainian government committee to combat disinformation hit list. There's the color revolution in Georgia. Who's running it? Well, Soros, the National Endowment for Democracy, the Agency for International Development in the United States, the same old regime change network. And their charge is 
that the government of Georgia is demanding that these various NGOs have to report where their money is coming from. Well, you know what? The U.S. does that. The European governments do that. Why shouldn't Georgia do that? Especially when we know that these funds are coming from agencies committed to destabilizing the existing government and a color revolution. Uh, then you have the Sullivan deployment to Saudi Arabia, an attempt to undermine Saudi-Chinese relations to keep Saudi Arabia out of the BRICS. Uh, very straightforward and obvious. Hopefully the Saudis will figure it out. Then the Gaza killing is continuing. Uh, now there's a floating pier or harbor that's been constructed, which could be used to evacuate Palestine of Palestinians. And Israel now controls the Rafah Gate to Egypt. So this is these are very troubling developments. However, keep in mind that the Israelis are now operating with an arrest warrant out for their prime minister. So we'll see if these things can be leveraged to make a difference. And that's where your work comes in. But part of this is exposing the role of the British behind this. And I just wrote an article that develops this point fully. Let me just give you a couple of uh, examples from it. Now, even the, the pro-London Foreign Affairs magazine, the magazine of the Council on Foreign Relations, admits that Boris Johnson in May 2022 was sent to Kiev to sabotage the agreement that was reached for a ceasefire between Russia and Ukraine. This is important because the British made the point to Zelensky that you must not sign this agreement and in return we'll give you all the money you need. And that was very welcome news for the Zelensky kleptocrats in his government. Now what that meant is the war continued and the killing continued. Then in January of uh, 2024, Prime Minister Sunak went to Kiev and signed with Zelensky a 10-year security agreement, security pact, which would guarantee $3 billion a year. Uh, a few months later, Cameron, Lord Cameron, the foreign minister, went to Kiev and upped that to $3.75 billion this year. And he emphasize that the UK now is lifting its prohibition against Ukraine using British missiles against Russian territory. Another provocation toward war. And you have the Defense Minister Shapps, who talked about, who bragged about the United Kingdom taking the lead in the war against Russia. And he said, it is very, very important that the US follows the UK lead. Now, in the midst of this, you have uh, just a, a slew of think tanks and various kinds of uh, government-linked agencies like Chatham House, the Council on Foreign Relations, the Atlantic Council, and so on, having conferences on provocations for war, how to defeat Russia, how to keep the war going, what NATO should do to make sure Ukraine survives. Now, that's the situation we face, where there's a potential for a dramatic shift, a tectonic shift, which is actually underway in a break with this idea of the unipolar order. But at the same time, a British push using such nitwits as Sullivan and Blinken uh, and Biden to continue the war policy to sabotage the potential to break out of this. Now, our job is to expose the war hawks as promoters of genocide on behalf of this unipolar order. Not for your benefit, not for your security, for your prosperity, but for their own personal private gain at the expense of sovereign nations. And secondly, you need to learn about the alternative, what the, the LaRouche has been, the LaRouche movement has been fighting for going back to for the Middle East, Lyndon LaRouche's 1975 advocacy of the Oasis Project. One of the ways you can educate yourself is subscribe to the EIR Daily News. And we're continuing the offer of a one-month free subscription, daily subscription to the online Daily News. Uh, so take advantage of it. It's in the description section. Also, you can share our videos, the My Daily Updates. 
the weekly dialogue with Helga Zepp LaRouche every Wednesday, uh, the Saturday night Manhattan Project and or Saturday afternoon Manhattan Project. And today I'll be posting the one from this past Saturday, free to watch. So as you can see, this week has demonstrated the life and death nature of the world as the empire is collapsing. We have to make sure there's a peaceful transition and that will depend not on politicians, not on official institutions, but on what the people do and what the people say. So get with us on this and, and take advantage of our special offer. I'll see you again tomorrow.